There's honestly no genuine reason I could give you to purchase FIFA 20 on Nintendo Switch if you already own FIFA 19 on Switch. I don't generally share the sentiment of the crowd that labels sports games as the same every year, but when it comes to FIFA 20 Legacy Edition, all of the comment section tropes are valid. For a series already drowning in microtransaction debate, the Switch version really doesn't help EA's case in currying gamers' favour by essentially offering nothing but a bare-bones roster update for nearly the price of a full game. A macro transaction, if you will. Last year, I had this to say about FIFA 19's gameplay on Nintendo Switch. FIFA 19's moment-to-moment -moment gameplay remains disappointingly largely unchanged from last year's under-par outing. All in all, FIFA 19's gameplay on Switch appears to have been largely neglected when compared to last year, and especially when compared to its big brother. This year, I have this to say about FIFA 20's gameplay on Nintendo Switch. FIFA 20's moment-to-moment -moment gameplay remains disappointingly completely unchanged from last year's under-par outing. All in all, FIFA 20's gameplay on Switch appears to have been largely neglected when compared to last year, and especially when compared to its big brother. If you feel shortchanged by the fact that all I've done is changed a handful of small elements from the original version, mostly to change the date, then you know exactly how I feel when playing FIFA 20 Legacy Edition. To EA's credit, it has been wholly transparent about the nature of this version, including a name change and being upfront about what Legacy Edition actually means. It promises the same gameplay innovation from FIFA 19 without any new development or significant enhancements, as well as no new game modes. In essence, it's a strict back version of FIFA 20 and indicative of its approach to the series on Switch. On the other hand, EA still has the gall to charge £45 or $50 for it, with no upgrade option for owners of FIFA 19. And, as promised, none of the gameplay innovations implemented in FIFA 20's core version have found their way onto Nintendo's hybrid device. Still missing are some of FIFA 19's additions, most notably among them the first touch system that allows the ball to be nudged in any direction with the right analog stick. This lack of subtlety over first time control and often wayward passing due to the inherent lack of accuracy attainable from the Joy-Con sticks can lead to messy football. Bringing the ball under control from a long raking pass can be a drawn out experience. Players often bundle into one another and knock them to the ground both on and off the ball, and often to no repercussions, which further adds to the mayhem. Playing with the Pro Controller can ease the chaos slightly, it's better analog sticks bringing more order to proceedings when in possession of the ball, but it's still clear to see that FIFA 20 on Switch lacks the tweaks that the real FIFA has benefited from over the past couple of years. Shooting is still an entirely underwhelming experience. Efforts from distance still balloon into the air before dipping under the bar with off-putting regularity. Scoring one of these 40-yard strikes can feel great at first, but loses its appeal considerably after the fourth time it happens over the course of 90 minutes. Despite still being prone to absolute howlers, one area that appears to have seen slight improvement is the competence of goalkeepers. Even this displays a certain level of inconsistency though, and has me questioning whether I'm just searching for something different lost in the malaise of hollow familiarity. On the presentation front, player models have been updated as well as the kits they play in. They are all well rendered and true to life, especially when viewed on the Switch's small screen. You'd hope for this though. After all, this is mainly what you're paying for when you get FIFA 20 on Switch. This is the main crux to why FIFA 20 Legacy Edition is quite so disappointing. Pointing. Without any major changes to the way you play the game, there just doesn't feel like there's anywhere near enough there to warrant a full release. And tacking the words Legacy Edition onto the end isn't enough for EA to get a free pass on this one, especially when the Legacy left from the last FIFA Switch release was less than a glowing one. Yes, the menus have also benefited from a fresh look of paint, but what lays within them is sadly exactly the same as FIFA 19. Again, true to its word, EA has added literally no new game modes since last year's outing, nor have any tweaks been made to the existing ones. House rules are still there, but the zany new mystery ball mode has sadly not made its way onto the handheld. Most disappointing of all, there's no sign of Volta, the premier new addition to the core game is nowhere to be seen. The changes made to career mode, however minor they are, have also not made their way across. There's of course still Foot though, complete with its controversial microtransactions and surprise mechanics. This year's subpar version of FIFA for Switch is almost indistinguishable from last year's subpar version of FIFA for Switch, and embodies every bad thing you've heard about sports games recycling their content year after year almost to the level of parody. The lack of additions to FIFA 20 Legacy Edition outside of its new, more honest name and its refusal to innovate either on or off the pitch are disappointing, even borderline insulting. This is surely not the legacy EA had in mind. For more FIFA 20, check out our review of the PS4, Xbox One and PC version.